Hello everybody, this is Dr. Cole. Uh, it's very early Monday morning, October 10th, and we're entering week 8 of Humanities 2333 Philosophy of Life for the Fall 2022 term. All right, everybody, we're approaching the end of the term. Uh, the final exam will be this coming Friday and Saturday. We have some other business to mention before we get to that. Um, on the written assignment two papers, I have graded all the papers that came in by the due date of this past Thursday. And that was nine papers in all. Some additional work has come in since then. I'm not sure exactly how many. Some may come in over the course of today, Monday. So uh, I wanted to try to get those papers graded over the course of today. And if any, any come in late tonight before midnight, I'll try to get to those later in the week. I hope to have most all the papers graded by the end of the day today. And everyone should get an email. Everyone who did the assignment will, should get an email with your numerical grade and some comments from me about your assignment. Now, we are running a final discussion. It's now Monday. The discussion began yesterday, and it will run through midnight Tuesday tomorrow on life decisions. You're asked to access an article online from the Atlantic Monthly by Arthur Brooks and look at our class notes discussion of uh, Life Decisions, I believe that was lecture 13 last week, uh, drawing upon some work by uh, a philosopher who once taught your instructor, Professor Thomas Herka. Okay, so uh, discuss whether any of that would have or has had any influence or could possibly have on any important decisions, life decisions you may be facing. Okay, and that will be our last discussion for the term, and that will be continuing through tomorrow night, Tuesday at midnight. Please try to post at least twice by midnight tomorrow. All right? Okay, everybody, on the syllabus for this week, we have mortality, and then we have uh, worldviews and philosophies of life trying to bring the term to an end. Okay? Well, I thought that since the term was coming to an end, toward the end of the term, we should discuss the end, or our mortality that all of us will face. Now we've drawn upon the writing of philosopher John Martin Fisher, as you will see in the little PowerPoint, I believe he's mentioned in the class notes as well, in uh, offering some reflections on uh, mortality and death for you to consider. Among the questions that are brought up, does death constitute a harm to the deceased. Uh, the argument might be offered, how can the deceased be harmed? The deceased is not present to suffer the harm. In what sense, if any, is death a harm? Okay. Would immortality be desirable? It might or might not surprise you to know there are some philosophers who think it would not be desirable. As one student of mine piped up, in a philosophy class for which I was teaching assistant years ago, it would depend mightily on what kind of shape you would be in an advanced age. Okay. What about near-death experiences that people have had and recovered from and then testified that their experience suggested strongly to them the reality of an afterlife? What credence, if any, can we give to that? And finally, uh, what would be a good death Will most people in our times experience a good death? Uh, Professor Fisher is afraid not. He's afraid that we, many of us, may not experience a good death. All right. Some questions to consider with regard to mortality and death. Then, in the final set of class notes on, uh, on um, worldviews and philosophies of life, well, perhaps the major question is whether you're going to consider yourself to be a theist or a materialist. Those perhaps two basic alternative worldviews. We also introduce some uh, ter terminology, humanism and transcendentalism, okay, which are efforts to modify 
and shed a little different light on either a theist or a materialistic worldview. Now, everyone, in teaching this course, one thing I found out, the term philosophy of life can be used in a general or specific sense. I use it in a general sense, try to indicate that our course is trying to cover and to address important questions that you, the student, may bring to the course and that you might hope would be addressed in an introductory philosophy course. Now, philosophy of life has a more specific meaning than that in the discipline of philosophy. And what philosophy of life may mean, very often, is the study of the question whether or not you ought to be a nihilist. Okay, now what is a nihilist? N-I-H-I-L-I-S-T. Okay, a nihilist or a nihilist would be a philosopher who believes that no meaning can be given to human life. There's no doctrine you can appeal to that will render your life meaningful rather than meaningless. Okay. Now, to suggest that nihilism may be the case is disconcerting to people, and people may wonder why a philosopher would want to be a nihilist. Well, the answer to that question very simply is, if the philosopher thought that none of the alternatives were credible, that philosopher might think that he or she had no alternative but to be a nihilist. And to affirm that there's nothing we can appeal to that will render our lives meaningful. Okay. Now, you could be a nihilist, or you could give one another account of what might make your life meaningful. And we entertain several proposals as to what that might be. How you could uh, render a coherent account of a purpose to your life that might uh, amount to a retort or reply to philosophical nihilism. All right, so that's what we're trying to do on the syllabus this week in the last two sets of class notes for lectures 15 on mortality and 16 on uh, for a world views and philosophies of life. All right, what that leaves then, everybody, once we've done the discussion through Midnight Tuesday and graded all the papers is we have our final exam Friday and Saturday. You can take it anytime in that 48-hour window. 50 items just like the midterm exam. The material will be, by and large, the class notes for lectures 9 through 16. We've assigned one outside reading from M. Scott Peck. Please look at that. Maybe an, a question, an item or two on that reading. The rest of it coming from the class notes for lectures 9 through 16. Material that I hope is not as technical as some of what we have for the midterm exam, so hopefully you take some time to prepare, you'll be able to do a little better on the final exam than perhaps you did on the midterm. All right, and that will be it for Humanities 2023-33 Philosophy Life for this first eight weeks of the fall term. Okay. Um, grades are due uh, Tuesday, uh, I believe that's, let's see, Tuesday the 18th at the end of the business day. Um, any late work, it would be helpful to have that by the previous day, Monday. Um, I don't know if there'll be much late work because we set new dates for both our written assignments before the end of the term. But if there's anything you'd like to turn in late, okay, please contact me with regard to that. Now, there may be individuals who need to make up the midterm exam. I'll try to get messages out to those for whom that might apply. Okay. If you would like me to reopen the midterm exam for you, please contact me. Otherwise, we'll have an opportunity to take the final exam this Friday and Saturday. The material, by and large, is the Class notes for lectures 9 through 16. And once we do that, grades are due at the end of the business day, Tuesday the 18th. All right, so we'll take the final Friday and Saturday, the 14th and 15th, anytime in that 48-hour period. All right, then. I hope that our little late-week term has been a profitable, eye-opening experience for you. Uh, if you've enjoyed it and got something out of it, if it's opened your eyes to something important, I'm glad for that. Okay. Otherwise, contact me with any problems, issues, or questions through the website or at david.co.psu. We may try to get one last message out about a week from now to wind things up. Otherwise, good luck, and I hope 2333 in the fall term has been a good experience for you. Take it easy. Contact me if I can help you in any way.